Good morning students, I welcome you all for another lecture of the course Computer Architecture and Organization. In today's class, I am going to discuss about the input output operations in ARM processor. This is the last concept in unit 3 in our syllabus. I repeat, in today's class, I am going to discuss about input output operations in ARM processors. This is the last topic for unit 3. So ARM architecture uses memory mapped IMO to perform the input and output operations. So here what we what the meaning of this memory mapped IMO. So generally this memory mapped IMO is a one type of IMO addressing scheme. Basically, there are two I.O. addressing schemes. One is memory map I.O. and second one is I.O. map I.O. or isolated I.O. In ARM architectures, addressing of I.O. devices, we are used this memory mapped I.O. The meaning of this memory mapped I.O. is the available address space can be shared by both the memory as well as I.O. devices. I repeat my statement, the available address space shared by both the memory and I.O. devices. The meaning of this one is for example, in the available address space there are total 200 addresses are available. Out of these 200 addresses, some addresses are used by the memory and the remaining addresses are used by I.O. device. That means these are 200 addresses are split into two halves. One half of addresses are used by the memory, and the second half of addresses are used by IO device. Due to this, the advantages what we are getting from this is the processor need not be used as separate instructions to communicate with IO devices. What are the instructions your processor used to communicate with the memory? Either for transferring of our data to the memory location or retrieving the information from the memory location. The same instructions are used by the processor to communicate with input and output devices. That means your instruction need not be maintained as separate instructions for IO device communication. This is the one advantage you are getting from this memory map IO. And the second advantage is, in the system you need not be maintained a separate control signals for I.O. device communication. What are the control signals already exist in the system to communicating with the memory, like a read and write, the same control signals are used to communicating with the I.O. devices. These are the two major advantages we are getting by utilization of memory mapped I.O. addressing scheme in the systems. But only the problem with this is, the available address space can be shared by both the memory and the I.O. devices. Due to that, only a limited number of addresses we are assigned to the memory as well as a limited number of addresses are assigned to I.O. devices. But anyway, in ARM architecture, they use memory mapped I.O. to perform input and output operation. That means, in order to address I.O. devices in ARM processors, we use a memory map I.O. concept. That is the meaning of this. And next one is reading a character from a keyboard or sending a character to the display can be done using a programmed controlled I.O. Here what is the mechanism that we are using for transferring of our data as well as retrieving of data to or from an I.O. devices? That here is program line. In addition to this, there are two more techniques we have. One is interrupter driven I.O. and second one is a direct memory access, a DME. Right now I am not talking about a remaining two, that is interrupter driven I.O. as well as a direct memory access DME. 
But I can give a, a little bit information regarding to what is a program controlled I.O. The meaning of this particular one is in order to read a data from an input device, in order to read a data from an input device, internally our processor use a program to verify the device is ready to send a data to a processor or again if your processor sends some data to an output device first it will go and verify the device is ready to accept the data that is also do with the help of a, a particular program that means here our processor was continuously monitoring the input and output devices for reading a data from an input device as well as a writing a data to an output device with the help of certain programs that's the meaning of this program controlled I. The problem with this particular method is unnecessarily my processor was busy with reading a data from an input device and sending a data to an output device. In that process it took the help of a read program as well as a write program. Right? That is the meaning of this. In ARM processes, reading a character from an input device or sending a character to an output device, they have used uh, this program control I will admit. So in this slide, I am giving up important information regarding two keywords. One is uh, memory mapped I O and second one is uh, program controlled I O. Right. So here, how we can read a data from an input device or how we are sending a data to an output device for better understanding of this, you have took an example. Suppose bit B3 or bit 3, let us assume this is some B3. In each status register, that is a in status register or an out status register. In status register is always present in input device and out status register is always present in output device. In this in status register and out status register here I am assuming that bit B3 is act as a control flags which is a S in as well as S out. S in as well as S out. These are two are the control flags or the control bits which are present in my input device in status register as well as output device out status register. By verifying these are two bits by your processor either it read a data from an input device or it will transfer a data to an output device. So here my assumption is in status register and out status register bit B3 is S in or S out. And coming to the next, another important thing is I am assuming that the keyboard have internal buffer register which is called as data in register and display device has a another buffer register which I was assuming as a data out registers. And the addresses for data in register as well as a data out register I was assuming like this. For this data in register whose address is in status register plus 4 in status register plus 4 for example my in status register this address is some 2000 h in status register address is some 2000 h at the same time my data in register address is in status register address plus 4 due to that this data in register address is changes to 2004H. Why here we are going to add a 4? That is an important thing. You remember, friends, here you have to go and use always a 4 because in ARM processors, memory is a byte addressable. Memory is a byte addressable. That means each and every memory location can hold only one byte of information. But your processor is a 32 bit processor. And we have a 32 bit address. In order to hold a 32 bit address, we need a 4 continuous locations. So that's why here always the 4 was added. And similarly, the address for data out to register is 
the address for data out register is out status register plus 4. Let us assume this data out register that is the out status register address is some 3000 H. Then this data out register address is that a 3000 H plus 4 due to that it is becomes 3004 H. Here my assumption is like this friends you remember carefully your bit B3 in both in status register as well as out status register that B3 is was a dedicated to a control bit for in status register it is S in and for out status register it is S out it is my first assumption and the second assumption was the address of the buffer registers which are present in input device which is called a data in register whose address is in status register plus 4 and similarly another buffer register present in an output device which I can call as a data out register whose address is out status register plus 4. Again I can give a clarity about why I am adding 4 because your ARM is a 32 bit processor that is number 1 and number 2 is your ARM processor supports a byte addressable memory that means each and every location can hold a byte of information. Fine. So here what I am saying. So data out register address is uh, out status plus 4. So this is uh, the addresses of uh, my uh, data out register as well as uh, data in register. And next one is uh, here a third assumption is here my third assumption is the address of in status register initially copied into one of my CPU register that was R1. Here my assumption is in status register of my input device initially copied in one of my CPU register R1. Because right now I am going to explain about uh, how my processor can read a data from an input device with the help of a read program. Yeah. So here important thing is once I know the address of in status register initially and I know which bit of in status register is act as uh, the control flag based on the control flag bit value my processor can identify the input device is ready to send a data to me or not all these things uh, I can go and verify by execution of a program which is called a read program and go and see that read program is here it is a read weight that is nothing but a variable name or a, a label so my first instruction is LDR R3 comma in brackets of R1 so LDR means load, load register, load register R3 with the content of R1 specified address. What R1 contains? R1 holds the address of in status register. By execution of LDR R3 comma in brackets of R1, the meaning of this particular instruction is in status, in status register value was a transfer to our CPU register R3. I am initially a read up in status register information. Because to verify the input device is ready to send a data to me on or not by checking the bit B3. Because the bit B3 in status register is S in. If that S in is set to 1, that indicates the input device is ready to transfer a data to a processor because it the internal buffer register which is the data in is filled with the data. So for that purpose first thing what I am doing is I read a status register value into one of my CPU register R3. And next up TSD test test bit B3 in register R3 test bit b3 in register r3 what bit b3 in register r3 which is nothing but in status register bit b3 which is nothing but s by execution of this i am going to verify s in status i am going to verify s in status by execution of this we know that s in is uh, bit b3 in, in status register 
by execution of first instruction i read in status register value into a cpu register r3 and with the help of second instruction i am going to verify bit b3 of that in status register by verifying r3 bit 3 value which is s in value if it is set to 1 then i read the data from input device which already stored in a data in register if it is not set i have to wait certain amount of time after that again one more time i can go and verify the status of s in yeah that's why here my instruction is b e q branch if equal branch if equal that means if you have test beta r3 that is a bit b3 of r3 it is not set again you have to go for rewait that means you have to wait again certain amount of time because your sin was not set if sin was not set that means the data in register of that input device was empty if it is was a scenario after again certain amount of time one more time i am going to execute the same routine that is uh, ldr r3 comma in brackets of r1 again tst r3 comma hash 3 and again bq space up uh, which this routine was uh, executed continuously with a uh, uh, different uh, time intervals you come out of from this loop it was happened only when your s in is equal to 1 what is s in it is nothing but b3 and register r3 once it is set to 1 then you come out of from this loop then what happens ldr rb space r3 comma in brackets of r1 plus 4 what r1 has r1 has in status register address and here r1 plus 4 that means in status register address plus 4 you may get a data in register address you may get data in the register address so the meaning of this ldrb that means uh, load a byte load a byte your b represents load a byte from data in register whose address is appointed by r1 plus 4 your this is uh, belongs to data in register there is a data in register value was transferred to a CPU register R3. So it means here I was accessing only one byte because my data in register size is only 8 bits. Or my data in register size is a byte. Always it holds only 8 bits or a byte of information. Once my SN is set to 1, that means my input device is ready to transfer the data to the processor. Because the data in register is set to 1. So that's why here I'm not using LDR instruction. If I use the LDR instruction, that means load a register. That means load a 32-bit value. But if you are using LDRB, that means load a byte. From where? That is from data in register. Whose a, a size is only 8-bit, but whose address is appointed by R1 plus 4. And value is a transfer to R3 friends. So like this, with the help of this is simple, a program our processor can access a data from an input device in a similar way the processor send a character or the processor send an information to an output device again by execution of some other routine or some other program which i can return as a right weight you can go and verify that before discussing this a right weight one thing here you have to remember here again my assumption is like a previous case out status register address initially copied in one of my CPU register R. In previous case, when I am reading a data from an input device, that instant before I am going to discuss about a program, that occasion also my assumption was in status register address initially copied onto one of my CPU register. In a similar way, here also my assumption is. The address of out status register initially uh, copied onto one of my CPU register, which is R2. Now, comes friend, here we're going to verify this uh, what a right weight is. It is again a routine name or it's a variable or it is a label. My first instruction is LDR R4, comma, in brackets of R2. Here, this in brackets of R2 speaks about it speaks about out status register, out status register. 
Because at the beginning itself, I can say that out status register address initially copied into register R2. Now the meaning of LDR are four comma in brackets of R2. That means move the content of R2 specified location. Here R2 specifies out status register. That out status register value is a transfer to a register R4. Again, at the beginning, our assumption is either in any status register or out status register bit B3 is act as a control flag. For out status register, that is S out. Bit B3 is nothing but our S out in out status register. Here, that out status register value now I transfer to R4. In that R4, I have to go and verify bit B3. Which is my S out. If S out is set to 1, that indicates my output device is ready to accept a data from the processor. That means what are the internal buffer register that was present in output a, a device which is a, a data out register which was empty. So that's why here I was verifying this S out bit by execution of the instruction TST test R4, hash 3. That means uh, go and verify the bit B3 in R4 register which is uh, not set. Which is uh, not set. So that I am doing, uh, I am verifying that by execution of a third instruction which is a BEQ space uh, right which. It means my S out is not set. My S out is equal to still 0. If it is 0, what we have to do is, again we shift to this right way, it means you have to wait again certain amount of time, after that again one more time you have to go and read out status register value, thereafter again go and verify bit to b3 which is s out. If s out is set to 1, your s out is set to 1, then I can go and execute, there is a next instruction that is strb space r3 comma in brackets of r2 plus 4. That means what this R2 plus 4, this represents our data out register. Data out register. The meaning of this particular one is STRB stored bytes from R3 to data out register. We know that here R3 size is a 32 bit. I am not bothering about all the 32 bits of R3. I am only accessing least significant 8 bit because here I was transferring only a byte from R3 to data out register. The reason for this is this data out register size is 8 bit. It is an 8 bit. If it is not an 8 bit, it is a 32 bit. Instead of writing STRB, I simply can't write STR. So with the help of uh, this simple routine, our processor transfer the data to an output device. If you are observing a attached scenario, if the processor receives the data from an input device and it want to transfer any data to an output device, it will go and execute a particular routine. That's maybe a read weight or write weight. That's why in ARM processor reading a character from an input device or transfer a character to an output device, this was done with the help of program control diagram. I hope you understand friends. The concept IO operations in ARM process. Thank you for patient listening. In the next class, we will discuss some other new topic. Thank you once again.